So this is my favorite set of data, which is for cereals. So on calories, protein, fats, sodium, fiber, complex carbohydrates, sugars, uh, which shelf you put them on and how much potassium they've got. Here you can see there's some missing values. You can't have minus one potassium. You've got manufacturer, which is coded here as NQ and whatever else. If I display it properly, you see it says Nabisco, Quaker Oats, Kellogg's, Rolston, Purina. I sure make cat food as well. Uh, Post, I think that since this data set was collected, there's been some amalgamation of um, manufacturers, and I think it's now Post General Mills Quaker. And like, there's less than there was before, and there weren't very many in the past. Now there are just a very limited number. So let's say I want to check, is there a significant difference between the protein content of cereals made by General Mills and Kellogg? Now, this is not particularly a very intelligent thing to do because I've got more than two uh, groups, but I'm going to do it anyway. But the reason for doing this is because this has lots and lots of different outcome variables that I can do the hypothesis testing between. So I could do it on protein, calories, fat, I can do it on anything I want to. And you just pick it out of compare means, independent samples. What's this saying that for? What? I'm in this set of data. Analyze, compare means, independent samples. That's better. Phew. Right, test variable. I'm going to do protein. Could do fat, doesn't matter. Grouping variable is going to be manufacturer, and I'm picking a subgroup, which is G for General Mills and K for Kellogg's. Continue and press OK. So again, it's found there's 22 cereals from General Mills, 23 from Kellogg's. Uh, the mean protein content is 2.3 against 2.6. I go all the way through. The T value is that, the degrees of freedom is that, and the P value for the one-sided test. So if, I, if I'd had a hypothesis that Kellogg's has more protein and did a one-sided test, it would not be significant because it's not less than 0.05. If I did a two-sided test that there's a difference between the amount of protein in General Mills and Kellogg cereals, it would also not be significant because that's a lot bigger than 0.05. And if you look at the confidence interval for the difference, it goes from minus 0.99 to 0.328. So that includes in the confidence interval, a difference of zero. If your confidence interval contains zero, then zero difference is a possibility. Therefore, there is no difference between the means of the two groups. I did that for, what was it? That was protein. Let's do it for fat, just for the sake of uh, doing it for something else. Compare means independent sample. Let's get rid of protein. Let's put in fat instead. Go OK. Um, oh, 22, 23. There's a lot more fat in General Mills ones than there is in the Kellogg's one. So if I look at the General Mills, there's a significant difference in the two-sided hypothesis where I didn't know which one was going to have more. If I knew which one had more because I look at the ingredients and what they're doing, and I could have used this one as well. And the difference is between 0.32 and 1.18. So it's always positive. Now, any ideas for anybody who knows anything about nutrition and cereals, why that might be true? Why are Kellogg's getting less than General Mills? So General Mills, we've got clusters, cocoa puffs, count chocula. I'm getting hungry already. Crispy wheat and raisin, golden grahams. 
Honey Nut Cheerios, Kicks, Lucky Charms, Oatmeal Raisin Crisps, Raisin Nut Bran, Total Cornflakes. Actually, it's not so obvious why they've got way more than Kellogg's. Uh, perhaps it is. What are most of Kellogg's cereals made of? So let's do an analysis, which will make it fair for General Mills. So if I go for sugars, there's nothing significant between the two. And there's no difference in complex carbs either. General Mills on. Um, why might, which are the fattest cereals you can get? What cereals contain lots of fat? Nobody eats any cereals. What are Kellogg's famous for in cereals? No, they don't do lucky. Uh, lucky charms are high in fact. Yeah, or well, Frosted Flakes is uh, Kellogg's. Kellogg's started with corn flakes. What's it made of? Uh, everyone says corn. Okay, in English, corn means any of those things. So I'd say maize, which is its proper name. So corn would mean any of the uh, cereals. So it's, Kellogg's Corn Flakes are made with maize, which is high in carbs, but not particularly high in fat. Now, which of the cereals, and so if, if somebody said corn, I would think of wheat. That's corn to me. So what cereals are full of fat? Someone's answered it already. No, I mean cereals. So you've got a choice out of barley, wheat, maize, millet, oats. I'm trying to think what other, the other ones are. Which one of those has lots of fat in? No, cocoa pops are not something that I grow in a field. The thing that I'm looking for grows in a field. Barley is not particularly, it's more a sugar thing. So barley does not have excessive amounts of, maize doesn't have it, rice doesn't have any fat. Oats have lots of oils and fat. Wheat a bit, but not so much. Fat content is oats. So by far the fattiest cereal you're going to get is going to be granola with loads of nuts in it, which have loads of fat as well. So if you're eating nut granola, you are packing yourself with as much fat and carbs as you can imagine. There's nothing so fat filled as muesli. So everyone goes, oh, you don't want to be eating those things like Frosties. They've got so much sugar. Yeah, they have, but they haven't got so much fat. Swings and roundabouts. Dieters are many faceted 